are you doing, sir? What's up? I'm How are you right. doing? I'm all right. Um, so you are Lieutenant Colonel Giannis Curiosis. Did, did I pronounce that right, sir? Yeah. Giannis uh, means John in Greek. John. Yeah. Yeah. My name's John, too. So, yeah, we have that in common. All right. All right. Um, I'll just call you Cadet Bickers. That's all right. That, that's perfect. All right. So, um, you are currently an active duty service member. Yes. Um, which I, I, I want to say, first and foremost, thank you so much for your service mm. um, and how much it you know means to myself and this country. Um, so, what, what got you into uh, the military life, or specifically the Army? Yeah, I think it, it uh, struck me when I was fairly young. So what does that mean? Probably about eight or nine years old. There used to be a ridiculous movie series in the 80s. They used to have these uh, miniseries on TV sometimes. And the one that my mother had got me to start watching was one called North and South. And it was about the country right before, it started right before the Civil War. And one of the first four episodes or so, maybe five, it started to detail the lives of Americans that went to uh, uh, that went into that conflict, and in particular, two characters. I think I still remember their names. George Hazard was one. He was from the North. He was from Massachusetts, and the other one was uh, Ori Main, and he was from South Carolina. They were fictitious characters, but they both ended up being classmates at West Point, and the trials and tribulations that they went through as cadets, especially their plebe year at West Point, and the bond that they formed there was intriguing to me. And uh, I never really heard about West Point until before that TV series. So when it came on, it captured my curiosity, and then it captured my attention. And uh, I can remember in eighth grade squarely knowing in my heart that if there was one place that I wanted to go, uh, it was going to be the United States Military Academy at West Point. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm... Yeah, I'm very lucky. I'm lucky because I think that I I kind of knew what I wanted to do early, and things worked out for me. I'm very uh, fortunate, very lucky. And a lot of a lot of kids don't. A lot of kids they, they they're so stressed out about you know what they what they want to be and when they want to what they want to do next and how do they get there. And it's a process. I was lucky enough, I, enough, I think, for me that it hit me fairly early. And, uh, and, and, and I'm very, uh, uh, very thankful for that. Yeah. And I, uh, just a follow-up question. What was your, uh, you know, because you talked about that show that you watched. Um, what was your childhood like? How, how did you grow up? Because I know that uh, you're a second-generation um, Greek immigrant, correct? No, I'm first uh, generation, first, first which generation. means that my father uh, was born in Greece and then came over here and emigrated to the United States in, I think, 1967 or 68. And then I am uh, first generation because I was, you know, his, his son um, and uh, first generation American. So, yeah, that's uh, from Chicago, um, the city, within the city limits. Grew up in Chicago, had a great growing up. I... Uh, went to two different elementary schools. Uh, and then my high school year, even though I lived in Chicago, my parents uh, were, were nice enough and I was fortunate enough that they paid for a private school education for me at uh, Niles, uh, Notre Dame High School uh, in Niles, Illinois. All right, yeah, um, that, that's, that's so cool. Uh, what was your job? What was your job in the military? So I've been, uh, as a lieutenant, when I commissioned, I commissioned into the infantry. Uh, so I was an infantryman. I had held a lot of positions because that, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, I, I've been an infantryman the whole, the whole time with every role I've had. Uh, I was a platoon leader, a company executive officer, a company commander, um, went on to be a battalion executive officer, um, served in a variety of staff positions from the brigade to the corps. I was a, uh, what they call an observer controller, a JROTC that evaluates the tactical and operational performances of units when they go to, uh, to JROTC, the Joint Readiness Operations Training Center at Fort Polk. Um, did a stint as a uh, MIT team leader, uh, military transition team leader, combat advisor with the Iraqi, uh, with the Iraqi Army. 
and uh, and then uh, was fortunate enough to get a job as a professor of military science at Marquette University. My favorite job in the Army was being in that program and running that awesome Army ROTC program, one of the best in the country, and that's no lie. And uh, then I went on to Korea for a second tour and uh, served as the uh, G37 training and exercise director, and then later on as the director of training support activity Korea, uh, responsible for all the live, virtual, and constructive training that happened on the country, which is pretty cool. That, that's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, well, I had practice, right? I just didn't yeah. jump into a lot of those roles. Uh, Army, make sure that you develop, and if you stay in long enough, you, you take on a little bit more and a little bit more. Kind of like St. John's, right? Everybody starts off as a red board, right? Yeah. And then you slowly bump up, and the uh, next thing you know, you're wearing stripes, and then those that uh, really want to, all of a sudden they look down, and they got a couple of circles there indicating they're a cadet officer, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like that. We're so We're so happy to have you here. I know a number of people, including myself, we, we just love having you here. No, I like being here. And uh, don't mistake my countenance for not enjoying myself. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, not so at all. So i got to teach you uh, cadets how to, uh, how to get better, and I want you to get better. That's my ultimate goal for all of you is getting better. And, and I know you are. And I know everyone that's interested in doing so, you're at the right place at St. John's, right? Yeah. Um, do you have any notable experiences, any things that – stuck out to you uh, first and foremost? So I've had the luxury, I think, through the Army of really seeing the world. And I'm not saying seeing the world on vacation. I'm talking about living inside of countries that are outside of the U.S. and understanding them, at least having a glimpse into the soul of the country and what they're like and what the people are like. Uh, my first assignment in Germany was awesome. And uh, as a lieutenant, being in Europe, uh, was a great experience that, quite honestly, probably kept me in the Army to keep seeing new things and experiencing them. I've been to uh, a dozen-plus countries in Europe when I was a lieutenant. That kind of got me the bug to go into other areas. Uh, spent two tours in Korea, saw a lot of Southeast Asian places that I would have never have dreamed of seeing and interacted with the people, places like Japan and Thailand and Bali. Uh, so I think that the requisite experiences you have with other cultures – is something that I'm very grateful for in my uh, in my time with the Army. Yeah. Um, and how many years has it been? Uh, have you been in the service? 28 years of uh, active 28. duty service. It, oh. uh, well, let me back that up. Almost 28. I'm over 27. So 28 year mark would be in June. Uh, but I'm set to retire on the 1st of March. So I'll be just shy of 28 years when I retire. Mm -hmm. Um. My next question is a little uh, touchier for some people. Um, I want to be as sensitive as possible. Uh, but I'm just wondering, did you ever see any, um, any combat? Any, uh, were you ever, I guess, in the thick of it, sir? I mean, I think that's a fairly common experience for uh, folks that served in the Army in the last uh, 25 years since the, you know, the war on terror had started. Uh, it's not uncommon, right? It's fairly common in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan uh, that uh, uh, that people have been into, you know, combat situations. Uh, it's not all it's not all uh, horror, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, much like many veterans uh, that are my age, even a little bit younger and even a bit a little bit older, uh, a common experience I share with my fellow veterans. Was there any? Um... I guess, notable experiences in that? Um... Uh, notable, I don't, uh, not necessarily. I mean, uh, I, I, nothing that, that I would, that I would highlight. Yeah. Um, and thank you so much for answering that question. Yeah. I just want to be as, you know, sensitive as possible. Well, like I said, it's not very uncommon for, yeah, yeah. for that to be an experience with a lot of veterans, mm -hmm. uh, my age, younger, older. Uh, since 9-11. Um, and I guess uh, we're going to wrap it up soon. I mean, I'm I'm sure your family is so proud of you and, you know, all your loved ones because you've really, you know, what you've done is really amazing. Um, and I, once again, thank you for your service. And uh, is there anything that you would tell any cadets or uh 
any young men and women who would aspire to be like you and to serve their country? Well, number one, I think that the first thing that I would tell you is aspire to be yourself. That would be the first thing I would tell any anyone. Um, but with the other thing I'll tell you on the caveat of that is that the country needs strong men, strong women uh, to continue this legacy of military service. Um, and I'm, and it needs, uh, I mean, you look at the world today, that's not going away anytime soon. And it's interwoven within our history of a country ever since the beginning, ever since uh, the Revolutionary War. Where do these men and women come from? Do they come from places like this? What We happen to be sitting in a, uh, right next to the chapel and the wall behind me is littered with names that would tell you it's made of men and women just like the cadets that are here at St. John's. Somebody has got to answer that call. And uh, they did to the tune of at least 124 from St. John's and Northwestern uh, that are dotted on the wall behind me. And thanks to their service, um, an incredible place here at St. John's that for as small as it is, the tremendous amount of sacrifice that this institution has given to the country is, uh, is humbling. Yeah. yeah th thank you so much. Yeah. It, it's, it's really been a pleasure. <laughs> All right, Cadet Pickers. Yeah. Take care, buddy. Have a great day. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you.